Hello, my soccer universe. <laughs> Excuse me. Of all the teams that were playing today that I have heard of, um, there was PSG who managed to do a win, but you know, the PSG shirt that I have is from the 96, from a time where I still maintain the PSG from today has nothing to do with that from the 90s or even the 2000s. So take it or leave it. Um, and then the other two, were playing each other and fortunately went the right way. Milan and Fiorentina, of course. I would have put the Fiorentina shirt on, would have discounted uh, um, a different way. Uh, let's go to the Get That game before we then go to the Bundesliga and a little bit England for uh, more weighty issues. Uh, the battle for fourth in Serie A was center stage today. Um, the early game and I watched most of it was uh, between Atalanta and Genoa, where Atalanta, due to stadium renovations, had to play in Regionale Emilia. I think it was Reggio, uh, the where Sassuolo also plays its um, home games. I, I mean, it was they have two home. They have, uh, this was the second to last home game. I don't know if they will play the last one in Bergamo, but I know the stadium is going. To, uh, one side is torn down, so I probably assume that they will play there. It's also their stadium if they play in Europe, um, which I got aware today. Yeah, maybe it's a home away from home. Uh, I am a little bit amazed that uh, Bergamo has to go that far away to find a suitable stadium for them. But yeah, I mean that's a nice stadium right there, and then so. I guess it's not too bad um, and none of the neighbors they for sure don't want to play in Milan and they for sure don't want to share anything with Brescia so I guess I guess that's the closest stadium um, and before we get to the Milan game quickly on that game um, Bergamo dominated that one I mean I was hoping that since uh, Genoa is kind of in relegation trouble they will put up a fight they tried but not really uh, it was all Bergamo um, Atalanta Seemingly took an early lead, was waved off for offsides uh, because Sabata was standing in the way of the goalkeeper. So for that, okay. Um, and then later on they scored the 2-0 in the first half. <laughs> ah, the second goal, it was again waved off offside, would have been a 2-0. Um, and just by hair, and we have another one today. Um, as you know, I'm not that much in favor. Uh, on the other side, if you think about that one, if Sabata knows where he's standing and gets a little bit just half a step back he probably will still get this ball and still make this goal but it would not be offside so my hopes were kind of yeah I wanted to have a draw there that would have been enough I know I need Atalanta to lose once but a draw would have been already a big thing um, and again Atalanta would fully deserve this they're actually the story uh, of the season in Italy and maybe even in larger Europe uh, that's quite disregarded. Them, them and Getafe and unlike Getafe, Atalanta is actually an offensive juggernaut that's really worth watching. I mean I've seen a few Atalanta games mostly I'm hoping them to lose because I know they have to rival uh, they are uh, in a fight for Milan uh, with Milan for this Champions League spot but honestly they play really well and they are a dangerous team absolute dangerous team. So yeah after the break, not even a minute played, they get the 1-0 through uh, Barrow, who just came on. Um, and then seven minutes later, it's 2-0, and from then it was done and dusted. Uh, Pandev puts one back, it was nicely played by Genoa, but it was in the 91st. Uh, back heel pass to Pandev, who can slot it in. The equalizer didn't come. Uh, then others, Lazio wins at Cagliari, which means Lazio is still in contention a little bit there, but I don't think they will uh, threaten for the Champions League spots. So, then in the evening, Milan is playing at Fiorentina, and I have to say the first half, minus the first five minutes, where Muriel had one good chance, but other than that, Milan, this was the best I saw Milan play since they lost at Juventus, where they were the better team. I still maintain that. That's one of those games where if you get a draw out of there and if the referee does calls the, gives the right calls, um, you don't look in such troublesome position. There are two other games that were absolutely messed up, two or three. 
Uh, but that one I'm definitely look, looking at. Um, where you could have gotten at least a point. And you're only two points behind and you know, there were some missed chances there. Yes, there were some lucky wins there too. But I gotta say, that Juventus game still hurts. And yeah, Milan uh, played really well, went forward, uh, controlled Fiorentina. I know Fiorentina is in a bad spot and yes, they have some other times of trouble with the Fiorentina fans openly protesting the Della Valle brothers who own Fiorentina. The curva was empty for seemingly the entire game. They were only, you could really see where the curve is. Um, the, the ultras are stand. There was no one there. On the other side, Milan sector was absolutely full. But yeah, um, in those last rounds uh, in Italy and other leagues, you often see um, that it's not that filled. I mean, the Atalanta game, I know it's a long uh, drive, but hardly any spectators. Anyway, um, Milan had chances. I think uh, Suso had a, had an absolute sitter that should have been in. Um, that was another one. I want to say Chalanoglu uh, had a, a long range shot. And it was also Borini and Piontek were really working hard on the front without really getting um, a shot off. But then it's a cross in by Suso that Chalanoglu start, uh, touches with the head and it goes in 1 0. And that proved to be already the winner. Uh, Milan probably couldn't have gotten a second one, but the uh, second half was a different story. Fiorentina came again, first 10, 10, 10 minutes, they had a few half chances. The biggest chance is when Cassier uh, actually tried to uh, save and had to test Donnarumma. Um, Bakayoko was playing despite his row that I haven't really talked about because uh, came up, but he had a big fight uh, at the Bologna game with Gattuso, but Bakayoko um, seemingly apologized to the team kept uh, and played today and actually played well I I know it's a huge price tag but if they make a Champions League I think they gotta buy Bakayoko um, don't see much around it you can get rid of other players uh, I mean there are plenty I would even say although Suso made a good game today if you can get a decent amount of money for Suso I think it would not be uh, the worst thing I'd rather keep Castillejo in a way um, the thing with Suso is, I mean, he is an offensive force, but he's so predictable. He always does the same thing, has the same cross in that usually goes over the goal. The one cross that went in today uh, well landed on Jalanoglu's head. But other than that, he is just prone to losing the ball. So as much as I loved Suso, especially in 2018, and I mean both seasons in 2018, he's becoming more and more disappointment, kind of disjointed in there. So yeah, that would be a replacement. I actually like Castillejo almost better because he's a little bit more alive in the way. But you know, if they keep Suso, maybe on the new manager, if there's a new manager, I think there will be. Uh, it will go another way. Second half, Milan kind of more on the back side, Fiorentina more controlling, uh, especially between uh, the 70th and the 80th minute. Fiorentina was really pressing and um, Donnarumma needed to make a big save on uh, Chiesa and there were a few scenes where I really thought, oh, this is exactly not going the way I want it. But then in the 80th uh, starting there were two or three chances where uh, Milan could get the ball in midfield but played it often too sluggish, too hastily or whatever, they couldn't really connect to make, uh, to get the second goal. Fiorentina had another chance, but in the end um, was played home safely and uh, Milan hung on to a vital win. Fiorentina could potentially still be relegated, uh, depending on what Empoli is doing. So that's um, worrying a little bit. I still hope they are not getting there. Fiorentina is a team that absolutely belongs in Serie A. The few years they were, they were not in there, uh, something missing. Same thing when Napoli is not, not playing there. Same thing when Genoa is not playing there. There are certain teams that just belong in Serie A. But I know, sometimes it goes the other way. Um, the other thing that I watched, I watched the second half of Derby County against um, Leeds United. And 
I turn on the TV and just at that moment where I got to the game, uh, Leeds United scores the first goal through a um, roof. And I said to my wife, you know, I've been watching the Champions League, Europa League and, and so on, especially Champions League, great soccer. And then I watched the second English League, which is just intense, but that is it. Yes, they have Bielsa and I really like Bielsa as a coach. And I think he, I would love to see Bielsa in the Premier League. But the game was all not that great. There was a penalty that was first given, then retracted for Derby County. I think I was okay with it uh, being uh, taken back because it was there was no intent of a hit, hit, hitting play. It was just more an accidental hit. Yes, this can be given, but I think it was the right decision. Uh, but also the um, one player, uh, Klich, from uh, Leeds should have been sent off for uh, headbutting, or he headbutted the uh, chest area, belly area of um, um, player Valke adding up, and you could see that the referee was just looking away. Gotta be a little bit more careful. He definitely knew that, and maybe the linesman didn't get a good view on that. So, yeah. That means an away win for Leeds, Leeds United, which puts them in actually a pretty good position um, for um, advancing. The other game between Aston Villa and West Bromwich Al Albion, kind of a local derby, Villa dominated, but West Brom took the lead and Villa had to turn it around in the 75th and 79th, so within two, there was a penalty given that uh, if you look at it uh, during the play and so on, it looks really like a stonewall penalty and then if you look closer, mm -mm, there is no contact. He's really falling nicely. So yeah, with VAR, maybe this would have been taken back, maybe, maybe not. I, I could see that it's still given because, you know, the player is not get, getting there and really obstructing the attacker. Anyway, 2-1 for Aston Villa, heading to West Brom and we'll see who will play at Wembley. And then Germany, I watched all the goals and two highlights. Um, let's run through the results. Bremer wins at Hoffenheim 1 0, puts a big damper on Hoffenheim's results. Um, Leverkusen Schalke 1 1. Um, also, Leverkusen had a 1 0 lead, Schalke equalized. Uh, Leverkusen played actually in uh, retro uh, jerseys from 40 years ago when they first got promoted. Those jerseys looked actually awesome. I mean, it's not, it's just red, and then you have the Bayer logo, and then all for Leverkusen, like back then. It looks really red, retro, but I think it looked good. It would be a nice thing to see Le Leverkusen in uh, a jersey like that again. Um, Stuttgart secures the relegation spot with a 3-0 against Wolfsburg. Um, quite happy about that. Um, we had Hannover winning against Freiburg. It's not enough. They are relegated. Same for Nürnberg, who dominate against Gladbach most of the time, but then Gladbach uh, gets four um, yeah, late goals. Nah, second half goals, one should say. Um, and puts themselves in good position. But now the two big ones are, of course, Dortmund against Düsseldorf. Dortmund uh, dominated proceedings the first half and took a 1-0 lead. Um, then the a replacement goalie makes a huge mistake, 1-1. Right thereafter, uh, Dortmund answers through Delaney, uh, I think it's five minutes later, that they get the 2-1 and not too much after. Düsseldorf gets a penalty that was really caused by, again, the goalkeeper. And the uh, goalkeeper is in the wrong corner, but Düsseldorf shoots it to the right. Um, Luke Bacchio shoots it to the right and um, misses the goal. Uh, that was a big let off. It got a little bit nervy, but Götze in the 92nd makes it 3-1 and everyone thinks, oh, that's done and dusted. However, Kovnatsi, Natsuki makes it 3-2 in the 95th and 96th. They had a huge chance to equalize. Uh, it went off a Dortmund defender on of the, lo of the lower back. He was sitting there and if he's not sitting there, that ball is going in. Absolute crazy. So Dortmund um, keeps their chances for the Bundesliga and they are still in tech because Bayern Munich doesn't get the win. They get only a nil-nil draw 
a goal of Lewandowski was waved off because his big toe was offside, more or less. As much as I'm happy that there's still something to play for in the Bundesliga, um, I don't think this should have been waved off. This was, to me, not an offside. Almost, it was even worse than the Zapata one that I talked about earlier. I think this goal should, should have stood and we would have Bayern as a champion. I personally am happy that they're not, but I also, if I'm honest, that should not have been waved off. But okay, we have now two points between Bayern and Dortmund. Bayern plays the last day at home to Frankfurt, which still play tomorrow, and they have a must win to um, get into fourth spot. I mean, the results were most mostly in their favor. I mean, Leverkusen uh, not not getting getting a win, sitting at 55 um, only. But Gladbach at 55 only. So if Frankfurt wins, they're 57, and then it remains to be seen. Let's see quickly the last round, in the Bundesliga. Just a sec to pull it up. Last round is of course. Um, Bayern at home to Frankfurt, and this is a huge one. I mean, Frankfurt probably needs at least a point uh, to secure uh, the spot, and Bayern needs a win to secure the championship. Uh, but the same thing can be said for Gladbach against Dortmund. So, yeah, actually, does Bayern... On, nah, a point will not do it for them. If they make a point, it's three... Could do it for them based on goal differential. Let's quickly see. Yeah, they have superior goal difference. I mean, they beat uh, Dortmund 5 5 nil. So for Bayern, a draw would be enough. A draw would secure the championship. Well, um, they probably get that draw at home to Frankfurt. But Frankfurt would need points. So Leverkusen plays at Hertha, who have nothing to play for uh, in a way. And Gladbach plays away at home to Dortmund, where there's all to play for. So a very interesting last 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 round. Um, it will be. It remains to be seen. One last on Italy. Uh, next tomorrow is uh, Roma Juve, and I'm really curious how Juve will play. I mean. Um, for Milan now, two Juve wins in a row would be important. They play now against uh, away to Roma and then at home to Atalanta. And frankly, it is if Milan can get the two to wins, Roma is not that much of a danger anymore. But it would be very important that Juve beat Atalanta. I just have a gut feeling. Juve has nothing to play for unless Ronaldo wants to get this spot. And Atalanta is really playing well. So let's see how it goes. Let me know which games you watched, what you thought about these. Drop in the comments below your thoughts. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.